Welcome to Beside the Burn for Wednesday the 23rd of February. We're continuing our studies in Daniel and Daniel chapter 5. And so far Daniel has been explaining to Belshazzar how the great king of the past, Nebuchadnezzar, had trusted in God and how God had blessed him and put him in that position. Daniel is going to bring the interpretation of the handwriting that is on the wall and that interpretation is going to be damning on Belshazzar the king. And in preparation for that, Daniel is explaining God's thinking and telling Belshazzar what has happened in the past and where he has gone wrong as king so that when the interpretation is given, it's all he's already prepared the way and he's shown that there is no escape for Belshazzar. The writing is literally on the wall. So today we're going to read two verses, 22 and 23. And Daniel begins with this uh, attack or uh, this explanation to Belshazzar as to where he has gone wrong. Verse 22. And you, his son Belshazzar, have not humbled your heart, though you knew all this. The accusation comes from Daniel even before the writing on the wall is interpreted. This is all preparing the way for the message from God. He reminds Belshazzar that he knew all this, but he chose to ignore it. Though you knew all this, And yet you've done nothing about it. Belshazzar, you have not changed your behaviour. And he's saying here, you, the, the son or the grandson of Nebuchadnezzar, you have not humbled your heart. You have not bowed before Almighty God, even though you knew the stories. You've heard them since you were a child, about your grandfather, how he was a great king, how he was laid low, how he was raised up again, how he wrote a letter to all people telling them about the Lord God. And yet you knew all that, all the evidence was there for you and you rejected it and you ignored it. And Daniel is almost saying to Belshazzar here that this is incredible. How could this have happened? How could you have allowed this to happen whenever you knew everything that I have already said to you? I haven't told you one thing today that you'd never heard before. You knew it all. So verse 23, But you have lifted up yourself against the Lord of heaven, And the vessels of his house have been brought in before you. And you and your lords and your wives and your concubines have drunk wine from them. And you have praised the gods of silver and gold, of bronze, iron, wood and stone, which do not see or hear or know, but the God in whose hands is your breath and whose you are, are your ways. You have not honoured. So here's the accusation in great detail. Belshazzar hasn't just ignored God, he has lifted up himself against the Lord Most High. By the way that he's lived his life, he's rejected God and put himself above God. He thought that he was greater and better and that God could do nothing about it. And then I think this is possibly the crunch matter for Daniel and for God as well. These vessels that were taken out of the temple, they sat there for years in the pagan temple. But now Belshazzar dared to bring them and to use them for drunkenness and debauchery. And as I've said before, Daniel whenever he caught a glimpse of those vessels sitting on the tables and people drinking from them, a shudder must have gone down his spine that this was being used in such a way. It'd be like if you walked into church and there was um, a party taking place and they'd come and they'd lift at the communion table out of church and they had... um, brought it into the hall and there was all sorts of stuff spilt all over it 
and food was lying all around it and the baptismal font was, was sitting there and it was filled with alcohol and people were filling their glasses from it. We'd walk in and, and our hearts would sink and, and we'd almost scream at, at the thought of, of these items and, and we wouldn't hold a communion table and a baptismal font at the same level as the Israelites would have held these vessels in the temple. And yet it would grieve our hearts. And if it grieves our hearts, it's going to grieve God's heart. And so Daniel is setting all these things out before Belshazzar and telling him what has gone wrong and where he has done it. And not only that, not only has he rejected God and misused his vessels, but then you've gone and you've found other gods and you've praised them. You've praised the gods of silver, gold, bronze, iron, wood and stone. And yet these things do not see, they do not hear, they do not know, but you're praising them. And these are the very things that in a dream that your grandfather had, I told him these very things would be destroyed by the promised Messiah. And yet you're spending your time praising these things. It doesn't make any sense. You know that God actually in his hand holds your breath. And he holds all your ways in his hand. And yet knowing that from the testimony of your grandfather Nebuchadnezzar, You've chosen not to honour it. it. It it makes no sense. Why would someone in charge of a nation be so stupid? And yet his eyes have been blinded by the ruler of this world, by Satan. And he's chosen to listen to Satan rather than God. And he's ended up in this terrible position. So let's bow in prayer. Lord God Almighty, May we never be so blinded that we do not recognise you or your word. Forgive us, Lord, for those times whenever we have been sidelined and we've been distracted by the things of this world. Forgive us, we pray, and help us this day, Lord, to truly focus our eyes upon you and you alone. Amen.